Hi, I'm Rick Dancer. We're about to set off on a little adventure. Just you, me, my wife, the Chevy Tahoe, two bikes, and the Sony DVD cam. We're going to a county. That's the most northeastern county in the state of Oregon. You know that little section that sticks out into Idaho? This is it on a map right here, Wallowa County, right there. Now, I did call ahead and warn some of the folks that were coming. We're gonna be here for six nights, and then we'll bring it back and boil it down into 30 minutes. Ready to go? Few people simply pass through Wallowa County. It's not a highway to any place else, but a road to a particular destination. A part of Oregon many valley dwellers have heard of, but few have experienced for themselves. Pictures, video, and the interviews you will see can entice you, but in person, Wallowa County will connect you. I really don't think that there's been a, a new stick-built house built in Lost Tain in probably 40 years. Small to slow traffic as visitors make their way to the end of the pavement, to the very edge of Oregon. Those who live here will fight to keep it this way. Slightly touched, underdeveloped, wild, and unknown. No, no, we're very clannish. We don't come to visit, that's fine, but don't. A county with not one stoplight. Not one. Fast food, not welcome either. People here don't want fast food. The local restaurants, everybody has their favorite. And they, that's, they don't branch out a lot. What is Wallowa County? Who lives here? What you see is what here. Who stays in this land commonly known as Switzerland of America? 3,152 square miles of craters, prairie, hillsides, rivers, and those mountains. 7,220 folks call this county home. That's fewer than live in the city limits of Cottage Grove. I've lived here all my life and been what you call a hillbilly all my life. <laughs> Not everyone is a self-proclaimed hillbilly. Most simple, independent people. I think the pace of life, you know, it's kind of kicked back, not very frantic, you know. Small towns, you bet. For me, it's still the lifestyle, the surroundings, and, and the people. I just enjoy it here. A place where wide open space is more important than a savings account. A spot you eke out a living, much like those before you did. I do odd jobs for people. I did. I've kind of quit doing that. Few complain. It's the cost of living here. Wallowa Lake brings the tourists, always has. Legends of a monster 180 feet long, living at the bottom of that lake, not enough to scare people away. First sighting, 1885. The last, not later. Quiet for now. As we visit the different towns, you will hear reoccurring themes. Well, I live in that subdivision up there and we got a bunch of outsiders moved in there. I can't say that I'm happy about the situation at all. Don't be offended. What do you think of liberals? Uh, not too good. Those mountains, this land, worth protecting. But keep your ideas to yourself. What do you think of environmentalists? Oh, we don't like environmentalists. The old, the new, protected, guarded by tradition and those mountains. Wallowa County, the not-so-wild west, the edge of Oregon. We're at the end of the road. We're the end of the road. It's a place you come back to. What, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> I thought we had a problem when you were in my car. Now you're in my house. 
As long as you're here, I'm going to tell you about something. The Gene Hearing and Speech Center is having a big open house on the 21st of February from noon to 3, right at their center there. They're calling it the Speak the Love, Hear the Love Family Fun Day. And it's an open house. We're going to have magicians and storytellers and theater performances. This is for the whole family. There'll be hot dogs and popcorn. We're going to feed you. Really, the whole idea is just to get you in there to kind of educate you about what we do. Not only do we do hearing and speech work, but a lot of work in child literacy. And so we want you to know about that so you can spread the word to your neighbors and the other families in your area. So anyway, February 21st, noon to three, be there. We'll all be there. It's going to be really fun. And please, don't show up in my house again. This is getting a little weird. Dr. Freibio, I didn't know you were a swimmer. Hi, Rick. How you doing? How long have you been swimming? Oh, I've been swimming my whole life. Yeah. Hey, do you got time I can ask you a question about prostate cancer? Yeah, sure. Can you cure prostate cancer? Oh, sure. Prostate cancer can be cured all the time. I hear that from guys, though. I hear them saying, I I've heard prostate cancer can't be cured. That's absolutely not true. So prostate cancer can be cured with radiation or cured with surgery. As long as it's localized, as long as it doesn't spread, we can cure prostate cancer. Is that what scares a lot of guys the most when they find out they have it, that this is not curable when it's, in fact, one of the most curable cancers out there? Well, it is, yeah. I mean, uh, they, need to, they need to find out about that and find out about their option. Because, you know, sometimes, and this is a little strange, sometimes prostate cancer, even though it can be cured, doesn't need to be cured. Because prostate cancer is so slow-growing that, depending on a guy's age and his other medical problems, sometimes we make the decision to not do any treatment, even though we could. And that's where we have to individualize, and that's where he needs to go in and talk to his doctor and find out about his case. Okay, you probably need to finish your laps. We've been talking too yeah, long, and I know how it is. It's nice to talk to you, too. See you later, Dave. When you drive through Wallowa, the first town as you cross the county, no, this is rural Oregon. 800 people live in this town. Wallowa. Wallowa, you learn that when you first come here. Kathy Shoemaker is a newcomer, moved here from Lake Tahoe. Bought the pizza slash video store on Main Street. Okay, don't get too close. A slower lifestyle, Lake Tahoe, um, a lot of tourists. Uh, busy, busy, busy all the time. Debbie Lind is also a newcomer. Oh, by the way, if you don't have a few generations connected to Wallowa County, you're a newcomer. It's uh, jeans and boots and, you know, uh, nothing real fancy. You don't have to have a tux. Debbie works at the pharmacy. We cannot buy underwear here. If you want underwear, you go to Debs and Enterprise or Walmart an hour away. There's a high school, the main street, some cool shops in town, but not a lot to make a tourist stop and stay. That can be a problem if you own a business. We have a lot of traffic going from here through to Joseph, which is the touristy town. And uh, can I say this? <laughs> no one here wants it to become a town, but we have so much traffic going through, we just need them to stop and patronize our businesses and, and buy a few things. And we're happy with that to keep going and keep our simple way of life. Judy Taylor opened a tea shop. Great place, lots to offer. Getting folks to stop, easy. You know, we have the railroad here now and uh, they do the excursion trains. That's drawn a lot of people to here, but they they come, they go on the excursion train, then they leave um, to go and spend their money somewhere else because many else here to do that. In the library, you already got the library. This group of ladies is doing its best to sell the town to me, so I'll sell it to you. But how do you market simplicity? When I first moved here, I needed a tomato. And so I walked downtown thinking I could get a tomato, but everything closed up at seven. So you want a tomato, you got to get it before seven. And what do you do when others in town don't want change, don't want people, don't want tourists? I would say it's maybe half, half and half. You've got a problem. They're afraid it's going to get too big and they're not going to enjoy being here anymore. And it's going to be overrun with too many people and they won't get to relax and then fish in their favorite spot by themselves. Trade-offs to progress, is it? No one's quite sure, so they hold. Just down the road a bit is a place called Lostine. Not Lostine, but Lostine. 
not a lot here. You got one tavern and you got one grocery store and you got a post office. It's all we need. Tell me your name and your nickname. Uh, Lowell D. Arvin, and uh, my nickname is Shark. So I got to ask you, why do they call you? Okay, they call me Shark because back when I was logging, they pinned that name on me and it stuck. Shark, an unofficial town crier. It's a tiny little town, we love it. Don't forget the Blue Banana Espresso Shop. You can't miss it. Won't forget it. Coffee's darn good too. We love it here. This is just home. M. Crow and Company is a constant in Lost Dean. It's been here a hundred years. The same fan started it. Yeah, that's them. Well, it's just the picture. It's an easy existence, uh, easy way of life. Uh, people are who they seem to be. There's no pretense. That's Keith Bird. He's family. Relarriage to the picture people. The store feels like it's an episode of Back to the Future. 98, 94. I think I'll just give you 100 if that's okay. Political posters on the wall as if the race were still on. Empty seats around the store are filled in the more guys talking about stuff. Don't need a guy like me in these parts. Everybody's a reporter here. Anybody that employs 20 or 30 people is a major employer around here. Locals can go 30 days without a nickel on them. Don't need it. The store doesn't take Visa, MasterCard, or debit, whatever that is. It's credit the old-fashioned way on a ledger card. They're uh, beginning to put in the services real soon here. There's a 10-acre subdivision that's going to have 10 5-acre parcels to it. And if we're going to have a boom, this is probably the big one. Bringing city folk in, not a popular arrangement in these parts. Growth? growth to, it's a big, scary word. Well, they try to bring their city ways with, and then they try to tell us how to live and what to do. Don't like it. In a place where a 14-year-old can still ride her horse through town and doesn't need a plastic bag to pick up the mess after the horse, city ways are a threatening question. All they see is asphalt. They don't know crap from wild honey and they just they're just city folks can't say i'm crazy about them self-service goes out the door when too many people come to town lostine likes things just the way they are a place where tractors parked on main street won't attract a look lostine it's such a kind of a unique area that people just have to come see but it's not on the way to anywhere you can't get anywhere else from here without you know, diving off in a canyon somewhere. And uh, I've joked about it for a, while, for a long time that the pavement kind of does stop here. But not quite. We've got a couple of miles to go after the break. If every county needs a biggest town in northeastern Oregon, this is it. Enterprise. Not only is it the largest town in Wallowa County, it's the place with the most history, and people are trying to save every bit of it. And it is a wonderfully intact historic town. In the late 1800s, Enterprise at that point was nothing but a plat map. Developers convinced those plotting the map to give them some land and create what is today Enterprise. Jack McLaren's watched builders cut the quarried Bulby stone to construct the centerpiece of town, the county courthouse. The real strong voice in enterprise is they want to protect what they have in an authentic way. The old buildings, many made of the same stone, line the streets today. Enterprise is consistent. 2,002 people live here. That population of 2,002 has stayed consistent, relatively consistent since the 1920s. When you move to Enterprise, bring the job with you. People want to come to Wallowa County, but uh, there's nothing to, to do. There's no industry, art, government, farming, ranching. That's pretty much it. Folks in this part of the state are feeling pressure to grow. As Central Oregon gets more crowded, explorers venture northeast to find this place. People here are afraid of growth, though, aren't they? I think so. You don't want to become bad. No, no. We, at the same time, 
We're also concerned about our economic future. So they plan carefully, resisting the temptation to recreate. Protecting what we have, not trying to become something we're not. Earl McLaughlin understands the balance between preservation and recreation. He lives a few miles outside of Enterprise. This is my workshop, my, my area where I do the restorations. When weather permits, Earl farms cereal grain. From basically the 1st of November till the 1st of April, you know, there's not much going on on the farm with no livestock. To fill his time, in 1983, he bought his first tractor. I just have an intense desire to collect some of the old farm implements and try to preserve some of our heritage. 33 tractors later. Well, I've probably got three or four buildings that are pretty full of stuff, you know. His obsession includes more than tractors. Well, it's part of our heritage, you know. It's part of the foundations of this country, the agri industry. His tractor restorations are impeccable. But for some of his collection, authenticity requires a fair amount of rust and moss. It took 130 years for it to get on there. And you, in a couple days, you could take it off. Yeah, and so and it just makes the stuff look natural. Yeah. Farmers are his detectives. They hear about an old piece of equipment and give him a call. Sometimes Willowa County seems so close. Okay, now this shows you what a small world we live in. I'm in Enterprise, Oregon, in the northeast of Oregon, talking to a farmer I've never met before. He tells me he bought this tractor right here from my neighbor in Camp Creek in Springfield from Bobby Fisher. There's something about Earl and those trying to preserve the history of Enterprise, Oregon that truly matters. Sometimes we think we have to save the world to make an impact, but you don't. You find the thing that makes you come alive and you do it. Whether it's saving a tractor or an old building in Enterprise, history will repeat itself. Wouldn't it be nice if it had an old friend to return home to? We'll be right back. One of the things when people hear about women's space, the first thing they think of is a crisis line in our safe house. And those are the primary services. A lot of people are shocked that we do anything else. Hi, this is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Um, some, I, a friend gave me this number and said that I needed to call women's space. One of the other really powerful things we do through all of our other services is we connect survivors with other survivors. I'm not afraid to um, to tell other women that if they come here, that they're gonna find help and that they're really gonna be able to start living a life in a different way that they've ever lived. They see each other in our support groups and everything. Um, when they go to the economic empowerment groups, they see them doing these great things. They realize they're not alone. And then at the breakfast, our community is going to get to see our survivors and all the wonderful services that Women's Space provides and they're going to be able to see how they can connect and how they can support us, whether it be financially, volunteering, or whatever it may be. Maybe it is you have an apartment complex, you, you have jobs that are available, let us know. It's the connections. It's the connections, us connecting with them. And, and our community connecting with Women's Space and the survivors and the work we do. Not many dairy farmers can brag about the fact that their cow manure doesn't stink, but at Lockmead Farms, they've got the electricity and the digesters to prove it. Poo to power in 48 hours is what Lockmead Farms likes to say. This state-of-the-art digesting system means Lockmead Farms is in some way recycling, reusing, and repurposing all of its so-called waste. Lockmead grows 80% of the feed on the farm. The cows turn that feed into milk. The undigested feed? is manure. These giant tanks and an elaborate system repurpose the manure into methane gas enough to power 300 homes. And the side benefit? The dairy farm odor is greatly reduced. In fact, you can hardly smell it at all. Even what comes out of the digesters is recycled. The liquids are put back into the fields to fertilize the crops that feed the cows. The solids are dried and used for bedding. Already, Lockmead Farms reduced its greenhouse gas emissions by 20% and it's producing electricity at the same time. At Lockmead Farms, Reuse, recycle, and repurpose is just the way we do business. Nestled beneath the majesty of the Wallowa Mountains is the county's most famous town. I love mountains and the cool air 
and the people, both the natives and the new people. Judy Botham was born and raised in Joseph. From the time that I grew up here until now, yeah, it, the change is so different, but it, the world market is different. Joseph is the tourist attraction of Malawa County, the town and the lake nearby. It wasn't much of a town until the bronze foundries came in. Now it's quite commercial, attracting artists from all over the world. Some locals think Joseph is just too much. They think we're quite commercial and there is some of that but then there's also uh, being able to make a living in a beautiful, beautiful place that you want to live. Joseph attracts newcomers like Nancy Holden. Well, I work two jobs. I get paid for one. <laughs> it's a very prominent thing um, around here. In Wallowa County, you work to pay for your habit, which is living beneath those great mountains. For me, I wouldn't be somewhere that didn't have mountains. Nancy works part-time waiting tables. The rest of the time, she and her partners roast coffee under the name Motley Brew. Our most popular one is called Grizzly Whiff, and we've had some fun with that. Not bad for a former cop. Setting up shop in Joseph comes with its difficulties. Remember, around here, until you've got generations to back you, you are not a local. It's hard to get people to use your, your stuff. You know, you're a new company, they don't know you or any, anything about you, and of course we weren't from here either, so we weren't locals. The grocery store sells the Motley Brew coffee, and so do some of the bed and breakfasts. In the meantime, the crew will just keep grinding away. We're ready, set, go. Back downtown, Judy Botham says, people in Wallowa County are just afraid of change. She's had to change. Her husband, Jay Shirley Botham, was a bronze sculptor. His work is all over the world. One sculpture sits just a block or two from where she works. But a few years ago, Shirley died. His chair sits at the cemetery, looking at the view he loved so much, those mountains. Judy couldn't refuse change. Death will do that to you. Trade-offs, the big picture. She says people would do better to take the focus of the future off of themselves and onto the greater good. It's going to happen. And that's just progress, but there can be progress with favor and class. Joseph, Oregon, the place of winding rivers. Down the road a bit, around a bend or two, deep below the canyon wall, is our final stop. The pavement ends here. Okay, this morning we're in Imnaha. Now, that's three syllables. Imnaha. You have to say it that way or people in town will laugh at you. Right behind me, that's the tavern and the store. And everybody tells me if you want to know what's going on in this town, you got to go to the unofficial town council. It's a bunch of old guys who meet here every morning and have coffee. So we're going to go in and see if they'll talk to us this morning. She brings the whole gun yeah, and stuff down, bottles like gun. No, I have to talk to her. Her mouth gets her in trouble. Bill, Hank, Doc, Alizar, Rich, Weldon, Bob, and Roland. This is the think tank <laughs> of Imnaha. This store, uh, see, this is a lot older than I am. And this store was originated, oh, back in uh, 18, late 1800s, see. Heather Tansy's folks own the tavern. This is it. Um, there's nothing else, really. This is mostly what people come to see. Yep, this is what you call tourism in Imnaha. On my carpal tunnel, if it get to bother me. The board of directors, or whatever they are, talk politics, road closures, and who done what. They don't solve the world's problems, but they talk about them. They're all so friendly and, and they just. Everybody knows everybody, and they're just really nice, and it's nice to have people who care. Bye, guys. Weldon Witherite is 79. I came back because I grew up here, and I like it down here. He still picks up odd jobs. Everybody in Imnaha does. 
It's just what you do. No hustle bustle. That's the thing I like about it. And it's just a good place to live, I think. Good place to live, they pack you off. When I'm coming down this canyon here, I mean, it's like, I get about halfway down, and it's like going into a different world. I mean, to me, this is Shangri-La. Alizar Holiday is 69. He belongs in Eugene, trust me. He's at home in Imna. Here, it's, it's pretty much the old pioneering spirit, you know. Uh, everybody's welcome to their opinion. Uh, I might not agree with it, but you're welcome to your opinion, you know. Alizar makes electric cuts wood, mows the lawn, you know, stuff like that. They primarily want, you know, let us do our thing down here, leave me alone. There is a school, K through eight, nine kids. Everybody over here could use more kids in the school. When the pavement ends, 24 miles of gravel road begin. This is the way you go to the Cat Point. They say it's narrow and steep. What a ride. What a view. Unbelievable, nerve-wracking, amazing. Well, we made it. That was an hour and 15 minutes, and we're at the top of the mountain. Hat Point, I'm going to show it to you, is right behind me, right there. There's a lookout tower, and now we're going to go up there and look out into Hell's Canyon for the very first time. Wallowa County is indeed a hidden jewel in Oregon's already spectacular array of scenery. We've never seen anything like it. But like most places you visit in Oregon, it's the people who really make these remote corners of Oregon what they are. The way it used to be. The way it should be. Every place we visited, Malawa County, said, come and visit. We want you to visit, but we don't want you to stay. So that's it for this special, and we're going to go. But we will be back. Oh, I forgot something. You guys are coming with me.